Hello, welcome to lecture number 13 of the quantum mechanics and molecular spectroscopy course. Okay. We will quickly go through the, the contents of lecture number 12 before we proceed with lecture number 13. In the last class, I told that a charged particle when placed in electromagnetic radiation or the light will experience what is known as Lorentz force. Okay. And Lorentz force F L is equal to Q times E plus V B. Okay. Where Q is the charge of the particle, so this is the Lorentz force. Okay. Where Q is the charge of the particle. and E is the electric field B is the magnetic field and U is the velocity of the particle or V is the velocity. And this in terms of classical mechanics force is given as mass into acceleration which could be written as d by dt of momentum. Okay. So, we use the analogy of this and converted the momentum p or p prime is equal to p minus q a where p is the original momentum. and A is the vector field. Okay. Having done this, then we cast the total Hamiltonian H as P square P prime square by 2 m plus V of x. We consider only in the V x direction and after doing the necessary math, okay, we came across the equation in which H prime of T is given by I H bar Q by M A del. Okay, that is your okay, uh, but minus I H bar del is nothing but operator P. Okay, okay. Then we could condense this equation to finally okay, H prime of T is equal to minus Q E naught by omega M cos omega t e dot p. Okay. So, this could be written as minus q by oh sorry plus there was a plus omega m cos omega t and you know e naught into e P and this E naught into E written can be written as E. So, Q pi omega m cos omega naught E dot P. So, this is H prime of T. Okay. But in the case of particles which are a atom or a molecule which has large number of particles, so which all of the charged particles will interact with the light. So, this H prime T for this is for one charge and when for collection of charge this will turn out to be 
minus sorry plus e naught by omega m cos omega t sigma over n okay q n m n sorry this is not needed because m is change going to be different for different particles m n p n okay because p is going to be momentum of the associate particle so this is for collection of charges okay so we will start this lecture with this equation so what we have at the end of the last class we had this h prime of t equals to e not by omega cos omega t sigma over n q n m n epsilon p okay where q n comma m n comma p n are charge mass momentum of the nth particle okay so this is what we have now if you go back to the uh, coefficient or the probability okay your p of t that is the probability of f okay is equal to 1 over h bar square integral or modulus of integral 0 to t prime e to the power of minus i omega i f t integral f h prime of t i dt modulus square okay that means we still have to evaluate this integral f h prime of t i so unless this integral is evaluated of course you cannot evaluate this p of t okay now to evaluate this integral now we know the hamilton so we need to plug in this value of h prime of t okay so your integral f h prime of t i is given by f e not by omega cos omega t sigma over n q n m n epsilon p n so this is the integral that i need to evaluate okay now i am going to slightly rewrite this equation or this integral f h prime of t i equals to okay now e not by omega cos omega t i'll take it outside integral f because e not is a constant omega is a constant cos omega t is a constant as far as this integral is concerned f because f and i are the eigen function of the time independent hamiltonian okay f times sigma over n q n by m n epsilon p n right okay now to begin with we'll start with a slightly slightly some other equation so if i take a quantity called r h not commutator that is the commutator of
of operators R and H naught. Right. Now, this can be evaluated at this combinator R comma H naught can be evaluated to be I H bar P by M. Okay. Now, uh, I am going to take a small detour and try to evaluate this commutator, but always remember the commuters are evaluated with respect to some function. So, if there is an R operator and there is a H naught operator, okay, H naught is along the direction of R. So, this will be equal to minus H bar square by 2 M D square by D R square with some potential V of R, okay, that you are H naught, okay. Now, then all of this will act on a function F of R. So, let us evaluate the commutator. So, by the way, this is okay. This is this is also called minus h bar square by 2m del r square plus v of r. Okay. So now what you have to evaluate? You have to evaluate r h naught commutator with respect to f of r function. Okay. So this will be equal to r times Okay. minus h bar square by 2m del square f of r minus minus h bar square by 2m del square r f of r. Take the first term, so that is we are going to be minus h bar square by 2m because it is constant r time del square f of r. Okay. Now the second one is my this is minus of this minus, so this will be plus h bar square by 2m del square r. F R. Okay. Now, if you take this, I'm just going to evaluate this. So, del square R F of R. This is equal to, but del is nothing but del 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 square. So that is nothing but del del of del R F of R. So one can first evaluate this. So, this is nothing but del times. Now, this is a differential. Del is nothing but d by dr. So, we have a differential function. So, first acts on r. So, we will give you 1. So, we will get f of r. Okay. Now, second, this will act on del f of r. Okay. So, what we will get is plus r times del f of r. Now again, now this del act, the second del acts on it or the second differential acts on it. So, you will get del f of r plus. Now, you have again a function. So, this is one function and this is another function. Del of r is 1. Okay. Okay. So, you will get del f of r because that is 1 plus del acting on del f of r give me r into del square f of r. Okay. So, now I am going to plug this in here and what you will get is, so what I am evaluating, I am evaluating r h naught commuted. So, this is equal to minus h bar square by 2 m r del square f of r plus h bar square by 2 m. <coughs> what do you have? Del f r, del f r, the 2 del f r, 
2 del fr plus this is r square r sorry r del square fr r del square f of r now if i expand this this will be minus h bar square by 2m r square r del square f of r plus this 2 and this 2 will get we will get h bar square by 2m del f r okay, plus h bar square by 2m r del square f r. Now, you will see that this m and this 10 will get cancelled though. So, this will be equal to h bar square by 2m del f r. So, this is nothing but this is equal to minus i h bar. So, so, there is no 2 here, m here, just m. By m multipl multiplied by i h, sorry, this is plus i minus i h bar by. So, minus i square minus 1 into minus plus i i h bar del f of r. Oh, sorry, the, uh, finally you do not have f of r because it is evaluated with respect to f of r. So, then you have to put f of r here as well. So, then you are r, but this is nothing but p of r. Okay? So, what you get r h naught commutator will be equal to i h bar by m p. Okay. So, because now I want to use this this p operator here. Okay. So, let us continue. So, what was the equation that we had this one? Okay. So, f h prime of t i equals to e naught by omega cos omega t acting on f sigma over n q n by m n p n i and we found that r h naught sorry commutator is equal to i h bar p by m. Okay. Now, what I am going to do this? So, I am going to plug in here. So, this will be equal to. So, this will now be equal to e naught by omega cos omega t f sigma over n q n okay, into p n, p n by m n. Okay. So, p n by m n okay, is i. So, this is nothing but e naught by omega cos omega t. So, i h go on the other side that will be i will become minus i and h. So, you have h bar minus i that is what you get sigma or f epsilon uh, sigma sorry f sigma or n q n epsilon n r n h naught right. okay so that's the new uh, hamiltonian when you have plugged in this value so this will be equal to
So, this will be equal to minus i e naught by h bar omega cos omega t omega t into f. Okay. Now, let us expand this uh, commutator. So, this will be sigma over n q n r n h naught minus q n h naught r n i. Okay, I have just expanded this commutator R n H naught because this that it will be R n H naught minus H naught R n. So, this will be equal to minus i E naught by H bar omega cos omega t. Okay. I will write it as 2 sub because there are 2 terms here I can write it as 2 separate integrals. So, f of okay, sigma over n q n r n okay? because r is just a uh, okay. now uh, epsilon h naught acting on i minus f sigma over n q n h naught I. Okay. So, now this H naught will act on I, I on give me E I, okay, I. So, so, this will now be equal to I E naught by H bar omega cos omega t. This H naught acting on I give me E I, I. So, E i okay, f because E i is a number f sigma over n q n r n epsilon okay, i. Now, this h naught will act on the other side because you know h naught is a um, Hermitian operator and we know the turnover rule. So, if I turn use turnover rule this H naught can act on F and give me E F. Okay. Complex conjugate of it, but energies are always real. So, complex conjugate of E F star will be only E F. So, this will be minus E F integral F sigma over n q n r n Now, you will see the integral in both cases is the same. So, essentially your f h prime of t i can be written as minus e naught i by h bar omega cos omega t into E i minus E f into integral f sigma over n q n r n epsilon divided by i. Okay. Now, what is E i f i? E i minus f i E f sorry E i is equal to delta E i f. So, this is nothing but h cross omega i f. So, this is nothing but this is equal to minus i E naught 
h cross omega cos omega t this will be h, cross h bar omega i f integral f sigma over n q n r n epsilon i ok. Now, this h bar omega and this which are h bar shall get cancel. So, what you will get is this minus i e naught cos omega t omega i f by omega. So, this is very important term ok remember ok and f sigma over n q n r n i now, for if there are charges like this distributed over some this one, okay. So, this is charge Q1, this is charge Q2, this is charge Q3, Q4, Q5, etcetera, Q6, Q7, Q8, Q9, Q10. This is my center Q11, and then you have radiuses R1, R2, R3, R4. R6, R11, R10, etc. So, what is this? If I take, so this is a product of Q and Rn sum over, ok. If you have charges distributed like that, that will give you the dipole moment. So, for n charges, sigma over n Q n R n should be equal to mu. That is the dipole moment of the molecule, ok. So, that is nothing but is equal to minus i e naught cos omega t omega i f by omega f mu epsilon i. Okay. Now, what is mu dot or mu epsilon? Mu epsilon simply means that the mu has to have a dot product with the long to the epsilon that is the electric field vector ok. So, that will give me is given by this equation. Now, one could understand ok if you forget these prefactors this integral depends on the dipole moment of the atom or the molecule ok. By the way dipole moment of atom I do not know because it is dipole moment, it is uh, permanent dipole moment is 0, but dipole moment is not permanent dipole moment. You must understand mu is not equal to mu naught, we will come to that at later sometime. But essentially the initial and final states will couple okay, with respect to the projection of the dipole moment along the electric field vector. So, this is nothing but the projection of dipole moment along the electric field vector ok. And the, di the projection of the dipole moment along the electric field vector determines the selection rules and this will lead to selection rules. Okay, we will stop it here for this class and continue in the next lecture.